Today is Monday, December 31st, 1990. This is our champion, Rick Kent, and he returns with $5,250. This is a performance artist, Iofemi Falayan, and here's a writer, Mort Kamens. Rick is the champion. Iofemi and Mort, you are the challengers. And now, here is your master of the challenge, Dick Clark. Thank you. What a way to start the new year, folks. Can you believe this is the last day? It's impossible. Welcome to the Challengers. IFME and Mort will be doing their very, very best to end up 1990 as winners. Rick, you're already a winner with $5,250. Good luck to all three of you. The player who wins the most money goes on to the ultimate challenge, and that's worth $10,000. And start you all off with the $200 kitty in there. And the toss-up question is worth $100. The significance of this, of course, is if you get this, you get a chance to go to the board first. That's a little bit of an advantage. Everybody stand by now. Uh, as the clock strikes midnight tonight, Scandinavia's first two legal gambling casinos open in Vilja and Copenhagen in what country? Rick? Denmark. Denmark is right. You picked up the win on $100. Here's the subjects we start off with today. We've got TV highlights 1990, top sporting events of 1990, embarrassing moments of 1990, ringing in the new year, glamour's top women of 1990, and censorship 1990. If you will, please, sir, select one. Well, I'm a big sports fan, so let's go over the top sporting events of 1990. All right, check them out. We've got the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, and the World Series. $100 to $200 wagers coming up right now, if you will. Mort, are you in there? Okay, let's see what we have. Everybody gets a question this time. We'll start with you, Mort, for $100. In 1990, the San Francisco 49ers won their second consecutive Super Bowl. Name the losing team. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Sorry, sir, Denver Broncos. That'll cost you $100 for 150 IFME. Uh, the Detroit Pistons won four out of five from the Portland Trailblazers to repeat as NBA champs. What spunky guard took home the series MVP honors? Isaiah Thomas. You got it, right on the nose for $150. Rick, for 200 in 1990, the Cincinnati Reds upset the Oakland A's to become the world champions. Name the Reds' colorful woman owner. Marge Schott. You got it for $200. And still control the board. Let's go to TV highlights, 1990. All right, TV highlights so means comebacks, controversies, and really big flops. Select the one of your choice and make your wager, please. All right, we've got two of you going for controversies. Uh, IFME and Mort, stand by for this $150 question. Earlier this year, singer Sinead O'Connor refused to perform on an episode of Saturday Night Live because it was hosted by what controversial comedian? Mort? Andrew Dice Clay. You're right, sir, for $150. Rick, for $200. ABC's musical drama Cop Rock was one of this season's biggest disappointments. Name the producer who created it. Steven Botchko. You're right. For $200, you maintain control of the game. Which one of the last four? Okay, hopefully this won't be one, but embarrassing moments of 1990. <laughs> Let's see what we have. We have moments in sports, in business, and in politics. Embarrassing moments of 1990, folks. All right, two of you going for the $200 question. We'll move to that in a moment. Rick, after this one for you. In 1990, George Steinbrenner was forced to give up principal ownership of the New York Yankees. Name the baseball commissioner who calls Steinbrenner out. Faye Vincent. Faye Vincent is right for $100. IFM and Mort for $200. Before the election, right before it, this millionaire politician admitted he had paid no income taxes in 1986. Name this Republican candidate for governor of Texas. Mort. Uh, Clady Williams. You'll buy that, Judge? Yes, I will. All right, thank you, sir. $200. More to your choice of the last three, please. Let's try censorship, 1990. All right, we have newspapers, music, and television up there. One to $200 bets coming up. All right, for $150, Mort, name the American rap group whose album, As Nasty As They Want to Be, was found obscene in a federal court. Two live crew. You're correct for $150 for 200 IFME and Rick. In August, an obscenity complaint was filed against a Boston television station for airing parts of a one-man photography exhibit entitled The Perfect Moment by what controversial photographer? <laughs> IFME? Maplethorpe. Maplethorpe, Robert, his first name. You're right for $200. Women in the New Year and Glamour's top women of 1990. It's New Year's Eve. Let's ring in the New Year, Dick. You bet your life. We've got celebrations, we've got songs, and we've got symbols on New Year's Eve. Make your wager. 
Everybody going for the symbol question. That means they all double in value, making that one worth $400. All three of you stand by. During the Middle Ages, New Year's Day was celebrated on March 25th. But the date was restored to January 1st after the adoption of what calendar? Mort? The Gregorian calendar. Gregorian calendar is right now. You had a chance to go and pick up a couple more over there. Want to try either one of them? Well, let's try celebrations. Celebrations for $200. What popular sparkling white wine takes its name from the Italian word for foam? Uh, Spumanti? Spumanti is right. Do you want to go for the $300 and sweep the board for $900? Uh, I lucked into that one. Let's try songs. All right, songs. Over a 20-year span, television viewers could tune in on New Year's Eve and see what legendary band leader conduct his Royal Canadians. Guy Lombardo. Bless his heart. You won $300, swept the board for $900. We're Glamour's top women of 1990. Here are the questions involved in television, in tennis, and in Congress. Select your one of your choice, please. All right, two of you going for the television question. I have Emmy and Rick for $100. Who did Glamour salute for landing her own primetime news show after 13 years of hosting the Today Show? IFME? Pauly. Jane Pauly is right. Uh, and uh, let's see what we've got for you, Mort, under the $200 category in Congress. For fighting inequities in women's health care and medical research, Glamour honored what Colorado Congresswoman? Pat Schroeder. You're right, sir, for $200. And that's it. Well done game here. Mort, you're ahead with $1,700, closely followed by the other two players. And when we go to the second half of play, we raise the value of all of our questions. So don't go away. We're going to be right back. All news and current events questions are verified by Newsweek magazine. And now, let's get back to the challengers. I have uh, the risk of asking you this question for the 97th million time. Tell me the derivation of that name. I have Femi means the universe resounds with the joyful cry, I am. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad I asked. You're a performance artist. What is that? Well, basically, I use a lot of ways of communicating from the stage. Slides, music, words, sculpture, cloth, whatever will get my ideas across. You seem like a very happy lady. I try to be good. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, why have you got the uh, <clears throat> friend, Fred Flintstone tie on? Well, this was a Christmas present this Christmas oh. from one of my co-workers. They seem to feel that I look like Fred Flintstone, and they call Wait, me Fred Flintstone. And let, let me see your face forward a minute. My God, it is Fred. I know you anywhere. So they gave me the tie. I walked down the hall, they yelled yabba dabba do at me. <laughs> Our happy New Year to you. Mort, Thanks. you are an investor in what? Well, I invest in uh, somewhat in the stock market. I also do writing. Uh, anything to avoid practicing law, which I used to do. All right, I should ask all three of you now, what are you all going to be doing on New Year's Eve? Going to watch Dick Clark. Clark. There you are. <laughs> this is totally unrehearsed. Not, 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 we didn't talk about this at all. You realize it's this the 19th year I'm going to be standing in Times Square. Stay home, stay warm. We'll see you there tonight. And let's turn to the board and find out what we've got here. Talking to 1990 into 91. 1990s movies in review. 1990 swan songs. More major events. 1990 New Year's babies. 1990 things that got sacked. And irons in the fire. 1990. We've raised the values. And Mort, it's up to you to make the first selection. Let's try irons in the fire, please. Irons in the fire. Check them out. We've got the Iron Curtain, Jeremy Irons, and the Iron Ladies. Select the one you want to play and make your wager. All right, everybody gets a question this time. I have Hemi for $200 with the breakup of the Eastern Bloc. The phrase Iron Curtain has almost become obsolete. Name the British Prime Minister who popularized that phrase in 1946. Churchill. Churchill's right for $300, Rick. The current film Reversal of Fortune stars Jeremy Irons and Glenn Close as Klaus and Sonny Von Bulow. The Von Bulow's palatial estate is located in what Rhode Island resort town? Providence. Sorry, sir, it's Newport. That'll cost you $300. Mort, for $400, what is the first name of the businessman who is the husband of Iron Lady Margaret Thatcher? Um, Michael. Dennis was the name we were looking for. That's a costly one for you. $400 off the score. Control of the game belongs to you, IFME. Where do we go? Let's look at the movies in review, Dick. Movies in review, and we've got up there Dick Tracy, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Die Hard 2. Pick your favorite flick and make your choice. Everybody gets a question this time. Mort for $200. The film Dick Tracy starred Warren Beatty. 
Who played Tracy's nemesis, the crime boss named Big Boy Caprice? Al Pacino. Al Pacino was right for $200. IFM for $300. In the surprise hit film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the turtles use an expression first made popular 40 years ago on TV's Howdy Doody show. What is that expression? Cowabunga! You betcha! <laughs> All right, Rick, for $400, look to the video wall and let's watch a clip from the hit movie Die Hard 2. Roll the clip, please. Yahoo! Lots of action. Yeah. Die Hard 2. Now, in that film, Bonnie Bedelia, as Bruce Willis's wife, is trapped on a plane with a sleazy TV reporter, played by what actor? Name. You can see him, but you can't think of the name. It's William Atherton, William Atherton. was the name you were looking for. Wow. IFME, it's your choice of the last four. 1990 Swan Songs. Swan Songs it is. TV series, business dynasties, and politicians' terms. Please make your wager. For $200, IFME and Rick, the Stratford Inn closed its doors on May 21st, 1990. Its proprietor, Dick Loudon, was played by Bob Newhart. Name the actress who played Mrs. Loudon. Rick? Mary Fran. Mary Fran is right for $200. More for $400. In November, Elizabeth Dole left her cabinet post to take the reins of the American Red Cross. What cabinet position did she hold? Secretary of Labor. You're correct, sir, for $400. You've got control now. Three subjects. Uh, thing, 1990 things that got sacked. All right. Well, we're talking about groceries and quarterbacks and politicians. All of them got sacked in 1990. And all three of you get a question this time. IFME for $200. If you had Milano's, Sausalito's, or Chesapeake's in your grocery bag this year, you had some of the best-selling cookies made by what company? Pepperidge Farm. You're right. You know your cookies. <laughs> Rick, for $300. Name one of this year's most frequently sacked NFL quarterbacks, and you'll name the six foot five quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. Bernie Kosar. You know your sports. Uh, Mort for $400 this year after 12 years in office and a lackluster campaign. Incumbent Republican Rudy Boschwich lost his job as a senator from what Midwestern state? Minnesota. Minnesota's right. You've all uh, done very well in that category. Mort? Well, New Year's Baby sounds cute. Well, let's see what we have. We've got patriots and authors and comedians. <laughs> see, you're still sort of in the dark. Pick one uh, and see what happens here. We have the author question going for both of you, uh, IFME and Mort, for $300. Name the author, born January 1st, 1919, whose stories include A Perfect Day for Banana Fish and Uncle Wiggly in Connecticut. Mort? J.D. Salinger. You're right, sir, for $300. Rick, for $400. January 1st, 1943, marked the birth of comedian Don Novello, who's far better known as a funny priest named who? Father Guido Sarducci. You got your New Year's babies. <laughs> All right, the last one, major uh, events of 1990. We had the Emmys, the Grammys, and WrestleMania VI. <laughs> major <laughs> events of 1990. All right, everybody gets a question this time. We'll start with you, IFM, on the Emmys. Nominated for the eighth time, who finally took home the Best Comedy Series Actor Award at the 1990 Emmys? Danson. Ted Danson is right for $300. Mort, name the veteran singer who won her first four Grammys at the 1990 award shows, including the Album of the Year Award for Nick of Time. Bonnie Raitt. Bonnie Raitt's right. Rick, for $400. You're always into the sports thing here. <laughs> well, it's just right. coincidence. 1990's WrestleMania VI was probably the most eventful WrestleMania ever, as Hulk Hogan lost his World Wrestling Federation Championship belt. Name the wrestler who defeated Hogan. The Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Congratulations, and that time tells us we're about ready to move into our final challenge of the day. Now, you'll be able to wager any or all of your monies on the question of your choice. Let's see. Uh, Morton, you've got the most amount of money, $2,900. The other two are neck and neck, and we'll be back in just a moment to play that final challenge. It's always kind of interesting. Come on back. Prizes awarded by Citibank MasterCard and Visa Card, America's most widely used credit card. And now back to the final challenge, and here's your host, Dick Clark.
John Long, Happy New Year to you, sir, and thank you very much for a good year, folks. Uh, we're set for the final challenge, and this is the category under consideration. We have a look back at 1990, appropriate on this day before the new year. And at even odds, these are the questions you'll have. The Persian Gulf. You can double your wager on the Trump divorce, triple it on banking woes. And once again, I'll remind you that the money you have posted in front of you is yours to keep. You don't have to gamble it if you don't want to, but the highest wager does get the question. And uh, this is always kind of an interesting little gyration here as you play mental gymnastics, and the challenge is yours. Everybody's choices have been locked in. Rick, you have $1,400. Please declare. Okay, we're going to make it or break it for the Trump divorce for $1,400. A whole banana there. IFM, you've got $1,550. What did you do? Banking walls feels real familiar to me, Dick, so I'm going to take that for $1,050. All right, punch it in. We'll see what happens when Mort makes his selection. Mort? Well, it looks like it's going to come up to me. I took banking walls also, but I took it for $1,450. You got it. Higher wager does it, IFME. It's not over, however. It's between the two guys, and if they fall into bad luck, you could walk out of here the winner with $1,550. Let's play it out. Rick, the Trump divorce. The Donald's troubles began in February when the nation learned of his marital problems with his wife, Ivana. The story was broken by the gossip columnist at the New York Daily News. For $4,200, name that gossip columnist. Oh, I don't know. The name is Liz Smith. Oh. Sorry, that's a costly one for you. However, you've got other monies you won. We'll talk about that in a half a second. Now, Mort, the significance of this is if you're right, you win $7,250. If you're wrong, you will lose to IFME, who will beat you by about $100. So there's a lot working on this. Good luck to all of you. There seems to be no end in sight for our nation's savings and loan crisis. And now the chairman of the FDIC, the Federal Dep Deposit Insurance Corporation, has warned congressmen that our entire banking system may be in peril. For $7,250, Name the chairman of the FDIC. I believe it's Seidman. We'll take that, I believe, John? Yes, I will. Seidman or Seidman, congratulations. <laughs> you did it. Pulled it out. Checking the accounts. More than $7,250. IFME was $1,550. And your three-day total, Rick, is $5,250. I'll take it a run. Congratulations. Mark, let's go for the table. <laughs> Please call area code 818-562-1620. We all have a challenge on the last day of 1990, and Morton and I were just talking about, is it going to be easy, is it going to be tough? Of course, I've looked at it ahead of time. There's no way to know, because I don't know what you carry in your head. Some that I think are a cinch turn out to be just awful, and others I say are impossible people get. Right. Good luck. Thank you very much. Let's turn and take a look and see what it is. The first step is to look to the video wall. And the category you're going to face is the great poets. If you will, please sort of face me over here. I'll ask the audience not to say anything. It is a $10,000 question at stake here. Here we go. Mort, the great English poet, Alfred Lord Tennyson, was immensely popular and successful in his career. The one enduring shadow in his long life was caused by the death of a close friend of university days at the age of 22. Tennyson later authored a poem considered by many his best, dedicated to his youthful comrade. It contains the poignant phrase, I shall not lose thee though I die. For $10,000, give us the popular title of the poem and the name of the friend to whom it was dedicated. You have five seconds. Do you know the title of the poem? No, I don't. I was going to say Crossing the Bar, but there's no name. No, I thought that would be perhaps the one you would get. Right. The title was In Memoriam. Oh, I had yes. no idea to whom it was dedicated yes. to Arthur Hallam. Hallam. 
Arthur Henry Hallam in memoriam was a little bit familiar. Hey, hope you have a happy new year. Thank Things you very are not much. so bad. You nope. won $7,250. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time here Great. to do it one more time. Thank you. And if you're around, we'll see you from Times Square for the 19th year for now, Dick Clark. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Contestants today will receive QVEL. Prevent painful nighttime leg cramps with QVEL. It helps stop leg cramps before they start. QVEL. And rice aroni the San Francisco treat. Now with 30 flavors, you can serve it every day for a month and never serve the same dish twice. And Koala Springs sparkling natural mineral water with exotic fruit juices. Deliciously refreshing. There's nothing quite like a koala. And Klondike ice cream sandwiches. Creamy ice cream and rich chocolate cookies. No one puts chocolate and ice cream together like Klondike. And introducing new Dynatrim, the delicious, nutritious weight loss plan from the makers of Centrum. Lose yourself in the taste. Stay tuned for Up to the Minute Headlines with Paula Lopez and Carrie Kilbride, next. This is Don Morrow speaking. The Challengers is a run group.